They so caught up in my pride, but don't know what's inside. I've been down and I've been up, still ain't giving up. This is what we know. The police stated that they were on a private jet hours before his death okay they were coming from i don't know i guess overseas and they made it to chicago now while they were in the air the pilot alerted the airport that the occupants of the private jet had guns on board in the event that the pilot alerts the officials that are at the airport the officials the feds they were waiting for juice world and company to arrive so once juice world and company got to the airport is where they were stopped and where everything went down as far as the search so within this search ladies and gentlemen juice world himself swallowed multiple Percocet pills. I'm just going to say pills in general. I don't know if they are Percocets. I don't know, you know, but He swallowed multiple pills in hopes of Getting rid of evidence basically that is what caused the seizure That is what caused him to go into cardiac arrest That is what caused his death now what is disturbing about this and the same thing that I noticed with Mac Miller's death is that people have a lack of empathy when it comes to overdoses, okay? And this is my thing. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. My empathy more so goes, goes to an overdose versus a suicide. And I'm just going to leave that at that. I will get into that in another video if y'all want me to. But more of the story this was an accident so the simple fact that people are saying oh he caused this himself he did it himself all these hurtful things it's like were well, you right he did swallow the pills but you gotta really think and it does matter it really truly does matter what the person is thinking about when they're doing that he wasn't thinking about killing himself. He wasn't out to kill himself. This was an accident. And what I have a problem with and what is not sitting well with me is that this generation, my generation, his generation, I mean, it's all together. You know what I'm saying? We have a horrible way of coping with things and we also have a way of handling situations to an extreme okay i understand that pills that are like that those type of pills prescription pills when they are on your person you can get charged some time for that i do understand but i really would rather i really would rather get caught with it try to throw them or something shit i don't know i would really i wouldn't even think to ingest multiple pills oh so, so it's just like it, it wasn't a smart decision but his thoughts i know his thoughts were not to kill himself so let's not be insensitive because a 21 year old kid a 21 year old boy a 21 year old man lost his life okay and i feel like what's to blame is the constant being on the road the constant touring i don't know what it feels like to get on planes every so hours and travel overseas to the united states to this place to that place i don't know and i really wouldn't like that you know what i'm saying i really wouldn't want that life and that goes into coping too coping with your situation i don't know how that would feel so i don't know what i would do but to be addicted to pills man that's just like being addicted to heroin being addicted to meth it's a constant need and constant desire for that harsh shit and it's expensive no 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 okay it's canceling itself out but we as a generation don't know that we don't know that 
until it's too late and we don't have anything. That's why I do this YouTube shit. Because this is what I want to do for the rest of my life and make it a positive, healthy thing. I mean, it's just the combination is very dangerous. I can't imagine being on the road constantly and being in a daze like that. You know what I'm saying? I Listen, it's, it's very sad because this wasn't his intention, you know? He didn't know. He had no idea that th those couple of hours would be his last. And it really shouldn't have been. I feel like in the situation, it was a lot of things that could have been avoided. I don't understand why there weren't at least two planes. I mean, but I know that's a lot of money. But at the same time, if you're trying to do some stuff like that, you got to really put some money into it. 70 pounds of marijuana not on the not on the jet with a, a star you know what I'm saying not they shouldn't have did that Ugh. I mean it's just really sad because when I think of him being 21 my brother just turned 21 November the 18th my brother turned 21 and I couldn't even imagine like not even like living that type of life where you're you're doing multiple drugs and you're trying to cope with the past and you're trying to cope with depression with pills and with um leans i really feel bad because i know how hard growing up was and i i say all the time i say i really could have turned out worse just from what i witnessed and what was done to me you know, I really could have turned out worse. So that's because it's, it's shit like this where making split decisions take thought too. And making rash decisions and shit when shit is hitting the fan, that takes thought too. So I feel like this could have been avoided. It's a very sad situation all the way around because he was a very, he is a very talented person. And I also, in a later video, will talk about um, rappers, but anybody, anybody in general who makes prophecies. Because I was, I was listening to his music a while back. I was listening to it, what was that, last night. And it was just certain things that were in the song that were speaking to me in a way that it was making me sad for him. Because he was saying things like um, people telling me to stop popping the perks and all this other stuff. And it's just like, you have the sense. You just have to apply it, you know? And, I mean, it just sucks because he lost his life over something that could have been avoided and perhaps if there were people around who were focusing on his health and his well-being that he would still be alive because somebody would have been like nah you can't take those i'd rather i'd rather hold them in my fucking hand than you get in trouble or you have to pop these you know what i'm saying it's it's just a level of care a level of love that you have to have to not let somebody do that you know and it's not like letting somebody but it is you know especially if you witness that because you could just be like nah fuck that shit just whoop de whoop you know it's as simple as that but i don't know y'all he he has really been on my mind because at the end of the day nobody at the age of 21 should have their life cut short over a split decision over like i said something that could have been avoided just imagine and i want I, this is the last thing that i'm gonna say i want y'all to imagine if michael jackson passed away at the age of 21 just let that sink in for a second because we wouldn't have had Nathan.
we wouldn't have had shit from Michael Jackson. All that, um, well, I gotta, I gotta brush up on my facts, but all that, um, who's bad, man in the mirror, we wouldn't have had none of that if Michael Jackson would have passed at 21. So just imagine the things that he, Juice World, could have accomplished if this was avoided or handled in the right way. But that's the thing with our generation that I want y'all to realize. Our generation is very precious because we're hanging in a balance as far as a lot of things. Patience, drug abuse, domestic violence, anger issues, being volatile. I know. I know. But we got to rise from that. We got to not let our past control us and let it go. Whatever you witnessed, however people like treated you, whatever traumatic situation that happened or embarrassing or whatever the case is, let it go. Let it go. Because as you can see, it's only going to destroy us. It is only going to end our lives. It's only going to make life go on and then we're gone. We got things to do, people to meet, people to talk about, things to see. Did I already say things to see? I don't know. We got all that to do. All that and a bag of chips and a soda on the side with the soup and the crackers and the bread. Like we in communion with the wine and the church. All that. You feel me? We got a hell of a lot to do. And we can't succumb to what is now becoming the status quo. So I will leave this Real Talk Tuesday with that. Thank y'all for watching. It's your girl B. Octavia. I'm gone.